All right, so we're going to cover saws to start with. Um, so saws are used to cut wood, and the, there are two types of saws we use. So we use uh, either rip saw or cross cut saw. So if you have a piece of wood that grows vertically like this, if you're going to use uh, if you're going to cut in the direction that the grain goes, so up and down along the grain, you want to use a rip saw. If you're going to cut across the grain, so it would be cutting across the direction the tree grows, you would use a cross cut. So they have different type of teeth. So the rip teeth are like chisels, and the cross cuts are like knives. So the way that um, a tree grows, the grain in the tree is vertical, so it looks like this. So if you're going to cut across the grain and you have a chisel and you go into the grain, it's not going to cut. It's just going to wedge itself in between those fibers and rip them. But if you turn the chisel sideways like a knife, now you're going to slice across those fibers. So that's why a crosscut saw works is it's filed so that these teeth act like knives that cut on the side. So when they go across, they're slicing those fibers. But if you want to cut in the direction that the tree grows, like this, if you use a knife cut, you're going to go in between the fibers and it's not going to cut. So what you would do instead is use the chisel like this and then you would slice those fibers across. So a rip saw is going to use chisel teeth to do this. So the way that it's, um, the way that they're made is with a uh, 60 degree file and this is held more or less vertically and it's just filed straight across and that's what gives you those rip teeth. The same thing for the cross cut saw except you rotate it down and backwards and it slides right through those teeth like this and then the same thing on the other side. So with the same type of file you can saw you can, you can make either type of saw. So this saw was originally a rip saw that I converted into a cross cut saw. It's a, a back saw, so it's got the spinal on the back. And so if you want to, if you want to cut across, you can use a, a device like this called a bench cutter. It's just a piece of wood here, a piece of wood here on a piece of plywood, and it's just held in place with your, uh, your hand. And so by holding it like that, now these saws, the teeth, I see it easier on this are pointed forward so they are pointed in this direction which means they cut when you push the saw. So in a Japanese style they're backwards and they would cut on the pull stroke. So either one works but if you're going to use a bench hook you're going to be pushing forward on this to hold it in place. I've tried to use a bench hook with a Japanese saw and it just leads to pinched fingers. I'll just know that you know, from experience. Uh, <clears throat> So if I'm going to make a cut across here, I can use something like a combination square, which has a 90 degree angle, and it's got a flat piece here, and it's covered in glue, if somebody can clean it. Um, and then, for instance, on a piece of wood like walnut, I'll make two pencil marks. Uh, walnut's a dark brown wood, and you can see it's a lot easier to see the white pencil than it is the dark pencil. On a lighter piece of wood, such as pine, you can see the dark mark on the lighter colored wood. So with two pencils. So if I'm going to cut, um, to use a saw, it's all about stability. So you want to take a wide stance uh, and have the back foot pointing off to the side and the front foot pointing forward. And the whole idea <clears throat> behind sawing is, is saws are smart tools. So they they follow the cut. So whenever you start cutting, they're going to keep going in that direction. So the width of the cut is called the kerf, and the plate of the saw will then just follow down. Now this back saw you can only get um, about two to three inches before you run into the spine, so it's not useful for cutting all the way through a, a large piece of wood, but it's great for, with these small teeth, for controlled cuts. <coughs> so. What I'm going to focus on is keeping my shoulder and my arm and the saw all in the same plane. So my arm is just going to go back and forth and I position my body so that I can just make that cut straight. Because if you stand here and try to cut like this with your, 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 
saw in the middle of your body, you're going to tire your arm out and not be able to use it. So it's easier just to stand there and let the natural motion of your arm make the cut. Now one thing about the size of a cut, um, these two saws have very different sized teeth. So this saw has, I want to say it's about seven points per inch or seven, uh, seven teeth per inch, whereas this one's closer to about 15. Uh, <clears throat> why you would use that is because the empty space in between these teeth is called the gullet, and so when the saw cuts, it needs some place for that material to go. So as it cuts, it's going to cut that material, and that material is going to go up into this gullet, and then once you pass through the wood, gravity is going to take over, and it's just going to fall out of that gullet, and that's sawdust. So a big tooth saw like this one um, is going to make, that's a rip saw, so a cross-cut saw like this with bigger teeth, this one's about eight or nine, is going to leave a rougher cut. But it's going to be much faster. So if you need to cut material quickly, you would use something with bigger teeth. So I'm going to mark another section on this. and then use the carcass saw with the smaller teeth, it's also cross cut. And so when I'm cutting that straight line, I'm starting down at an angle and I'm gently lowering the saw back as it cuts so that I can maintain that straight line. Now the other thing when using a saw like this is I keep these shiny, so I put paste wax on this, like a shoe polish, just a clear wax, so that it gives a good reflection. Because if you're holding it like this, you can see the reflection of the board in the saw plate. And depending on how it's angled, you want to position it so that it looks like it's one continuous board going through the entire saw plate. That, without even having to check, by doing that, I know that I'm cutting 90 degrees and I'm going to get a flat spot. And so the carcass saw with the smaller teeth gives me a, a bit of a finer cut. It's easier to clean up, but it takes longer to go through. This one probably took less time because it's sharp and that one needs to be sharpened. Uh, but that's how you would go about cutting a, uh, cutting a board with that type of saw. Now if we we're going to use a rip saw, what we would do is we're going to put sandpaper in this vise just to uh, make it easier to hold. So if you have a sharp edge like this, you can just pull it and just rip the piece and that's an easy way to make sandpaper, uh, cut it into, without using scissors. So I'm going to mount this in the vise, and I'm going to put this down closer because if it's mounted like this, this is going to flop around up here and it's just not, it's going to be a harder cut. So I'm going to start with it lower and just use the sandpaper to hold it in place. And this time I'm going to use the panel saw because I want to rip all the way down this board. So I'm going to do the same stance, and I'm going to take my thumb, and I'm not going to put it up against the teeth, uh, but I'm going to put it up against the plate about half an inch to an inch above, and use it to stabilize that plate without getting my finger in the way of the cut.
just continue doing that all the way down. Which is why if I have to rip boards, ripping is called the cutting in the direction of the grain. Um, if I'm going to rip boards, I would much rather use a band saw or a table saw or something mechanical. The other thing is, if you look at this board, you see that I intentionally went a little bit off vertical on purpose. On purpose. Uh, because once you start down that, saws are very, they're called smart tools because they will just follow that. So once you get this panel saw in here, there is no real way to turn it. It's the, the plate of the saw is just way too big. So if you want to turn the saw, you have a uh, bow saw somewhere around here in theory. Thank you, Vanna. Oh, ha ha. So a bow saw, um, in this case, has a much thinner blade, so it's about an eighth of an inch, much smaller teeth, but you can turn this, and these, these knobs also both turn so that you can angle the blade and hold the saw in any, any position, because with this, you've only got about a six inch clearance, and once you get down to here, you'll no longer be able to cut. But it does allow you to turn. So you see I'm making very short, choppy cuts. Long cuts are great for going straight, but if you want to turn it, you want to make a tiny cut as you turn. You can see I'm running into that, so I'm going to turn the saw even more so I can hold it. And these look intimidating, but they're really pretty easy to use because they're lightweight. And then I'm going to start by sawing straight, so I'm going to try to keep the blade in line with the cut direction it's going. And then as I'm going, now I'm going to start to make a turn. And I'm going to turn it even more so that I don't bump this into that. together like a puzzle, except up here where it's much wider apart, and that's because these teeth are much wider. So the saw, it, it's, you can't tell on this one because I couldn't make it in the wood, but in reality what happens is each of these teeth are bent to the side, and they're wider than the width of the saw plate itself, and that's so that as you're cutting down, the widest part of the saw is the teeth so that the plate has extra room up here and it doesn't get bound because sometimes the wood will pinch if there's stress in the wood. And by using a saw with a lot of set, you take out more material but then you can cut without the, the wood pinching. So um, you can also use saws like these. This is a $5, 10 saw, you can get it in a big box store. These teeth here are carbide tipped, so they have um, a different metal here where the teeth are as opposed to the plate, which is flexible. Uh, so each of these saws are spring steel um, so that they can move. Uh, but the teeth on this saw, this is probably about 100 years old, uh, this saw's teeth 
are the same material as the rest of the saw, and it's by using a small triangular file that you can sharpen the teeth. And eventually it'll get to the point where the saw wears down and, and it just doesn't have enough plate left in it to sharpen, but you don't have to sharpen saws very often, whereas this saw, you'll never sharpen it. It is, the carbide teeth are much tougher than the file that you would use, whereas the file is, is tougher than the spring steel. So the file is not going to work to sharpen this, you'll just break the file. So these are one-use saws, but I've had this one for several years and they just seem to last forever. And once you get done with them, you can use the spring steel for other stuff. Um, one thing that's kind of nice about these saws is this edge right here, is 90 degrees to this, so you have a square. So if you want to mark 90 degrees, you can do that. Um, and then this edge is 45 degrees, so you can just set this edge against whatever your straight edge is, and then the back of the saw is 45 degrees. So you can, you don't need, if you're on a job site, you don't necessarily need to have a combination square that will give you, you know, aside from the glue, uh, 90 degrees. Okay. Did I miss anything? Um, See, I, had to teach him, I had to teach him all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the story I'm getting over here. <laughs>